Hi everyone and welcome back to another BTLO replay. Be sure to follow us on X, link in, or join the Discord server to keep in touch with the BTLO community. Links are in the description box below. For this episode, we are going to solve a lab named Dot. This lab will let us investigate the host and network logs captured from a compromised machine using proc dot to correlate both logs and answer the following questions. So this lab is mainly um, around Procdot, which is a visualization tool if you are familiar with GraphVis. But this one um, takes the CSV file from Procmon and a, a pickup file from Warshark and use that files to generate a, um, to visualize, to help the analyst visualize what happens, what really happened to to the endpoint during the capture. So yeah, so let's start our investigation. So we are in the lab itself. So let's read the file, text file. So both procmon.csv and network pickup are in the logs in the desktop. Answer the question by analyzing the files using proc. So launch the proc application using the shortcuts in the desktop. Procdot's dependencies are already installed and the path for the same below. Let's follow the instructions. Let's open the this one. So Procmon log should be the CSV file. And a wind dump is from the network. So let's hit this uh, process launcher. It lists all the processes from a uh, from this CSV file. This might take a while, so I'm gonna pause it. So now we have a series of uh, processes detected from the CSV file from Procmon. So let's start answering questions. So start with question number one. Attacker downloaded a tool from GitHub. What is the process initiated the connection? What is the file name? It is save us. So this question seems like, uh, yeah. So you have to analyze what this question wants you to do as an analyst. So the attacker downloaded a tool from GitHub. So from these processes, uh, you might ask yourself what type of process does or have the ability to to download the file from the internet so by ha using this information so we can search all this uh, process and look for anything that uh, might lead to uh, github or something so we'll start with powershell i think because powershell has this um modules that can uh download the file to from from the internet uh yeah, and PowerShell is also used as, um, what do you call this one? Um, yeah, for file as malwares and everything, just to reach to the C2 server and download a single, uh, download the script, uh, download the file using a script, PowerShell script, and yeah, for automation. Or something. So let's hit PowerShell and let's hit the refresh button. Now we have uh, proc. So yeah, once again, it uses the procmon csp file and network pickup file to correlate all these logs. So wait, I'm gonna zoom in out, zoom it in. Okay, so we are presented with a series of IPs, um, IOCs, process, and yeah, so. Question number one, attacker downloaded a tool from GitHub. What is the name? What is the process initiated the connection? And what is the file name that it is saved as? Okay, so let's inspect this um, dot file. So let's start from the beginning. 
So it seems like a uh, notepad that X eh, launch was launch. And then again, um, I think this notepad that X eh, is a uh, patch with malicious binary, uh, specifically a uh, DLL file because it uses the run DLL32 X. Eh? And then connected to this specific IP address launch PowerShell or a PowerShell connected to this specific IP address from the DLL file. So just a simple uh, short brief of what really happened. So we can see the CMD from the run DLL32.exe. So the DLL file spawn the CMD.exe. So we can see the shell to do the DLL, of course. This and uh, two. 736, which we believe is thread for the process. And we can see this uh, series of uh, binaries PowerShell, who am I? So, back to the question we are tasked to find the attacker, download uh, the, the, the process initiated the connection, and what is the file name it is saved as. So, we can see that uh, this we have. Um, raw.github.user.content which is answer that uh, the powershell that exit downloaded a file from git raw.github.com and um, save it as svc host.x in the c windows temp directory so i think we got our answer powershell.exe and the the c Windows temp SVC host that exe correct tweet. So PowerShell is used to download files from the attacker machine. What is the process ID of the PowerShell process that downloaded the first file? What is the attacker uh, machine IP? So going back. So let's go back. And uh, the, yeah, uh, the question is the PowerShell process that downloaded the first file, which we can see that the PowerShell XA 2740 downloaded a um, or has this shell 32.dll, which uh, I think it gets from connecting to this um, suspicious IP address. So. So we have 2740, 2740, and the, that again, the IP, 192.168.1.5. Sweet. So question number three, what is the port from which the second file was downloaded and what is the full path of the downloaded file? Okay. So let's find for the port. So we can see here that, that the port is 53. Yeah, we can see here that the port use is 53. And the what's the other question is what is the full path of the downloaded file? We're gonna find it. So going back to our Hunt. So we are inside the other run DLL 32 the exe, which is the uh, 4940 process ID. And uh, we have a series of uh, red flags here. So run the DLL 32 that exe launches notepad that exe. Uh, it gets the file from the program data Microsoft run DLL 32 that exe. So this one is really a bad find or a good find for and in any case because first run dll32.exe should not be in this uh, directory it uses the run dll32.exe1188 uses it to inject into the notepad process so i assume what really happened then launch cmd and this series of um 
commands. So to, let's copy this one. Let's try to understand if this file, if this file is a legitimate run dll32.exe, we're going to open it inside the Cyberchef. See, um, to have an idea of what type of, uh, because some, some samples, some malwares, they use legitimate looking or legitimate names, but they change the, for example, the L, letter L, they change it to letter I. So, see, let, write it like this. So, run DLL, instead of run DLL, they, the threat actor changed it to run DAI, right? So, if you, if you can see, it's still the same, right? It looks the same, just, uh, just like the run DLL32.exe. So, I think this is enough red flag for us to identify that this is a, uh, the second file that was downloaded. Data, Microsoft. That. What is the PID of the victim process on which the injection happened? So as we can see, the run DLL32 or run DI32 injects its process, um, uses legitimate run DLL32.exe to inject the shell32.dll to the notepad process. So I think we got our answer here, 1768, wait. So for this one, the this one is uh, a little bit of uh, more of a uh, logical, or I mean, the uh, you are familiar with met Metapreter, Metasploit. So attacker got control over the system after the injection, assuming that he used Metapreter. Metapreter is um, like a C2 or command and control. What is the payload he would have used? Okay, written as selected in Metasploit. And what is the port? So we have identified that the uh, attacker was contacting the the this IP address using port fifty three. Um, for the payload part is if you have used or if you have uh done any uh exercises with regards to the um Metasploit or Metapreter, uh, in the past, you are highly familiar with the uh, connection type, right? The reverse TCP and everything. So, uh, yeah, so we have the payload versus TCP to connect back. You can see the, the arrows. It seems that run the L32.exe or the notepad that notepad.x Notepad that X is contacting this IP address, and this IP address connects back to the um, to the process or to the system. So reverse TCP, we believe it's a reverse TCP payload, and uh, 53. Sweet, right? Next is what is the PID and location of the main malware which initiated this action? So for this one, we're going to um, Exit the process. Uh, we're gonna run again the process listing of the product tool. Uh, what is the PID and location of the main malware which is initiated this action? So in order to answer this, we have to trace back the program execution, right? So let's start with SVC host. SVC host. We know that the SVC host was the um, Downloaded file using the PowerShell. We can uh, we saw earlier that this uh, PowerShell contacted or downloaded the file from GitHub. So and PowerShell was executed by CMD, CMD.exe, and CMD.exe was executed by RunDLL32.exe, which is in, which injected the the shell32.dll into the Notepad process. So we have a series of PowerShell here, CMD, CMD, and XA. We can see the CMD here. 
can confirm that the explorer.exe 3900 executed this series of CMD. So when you double click the file, uh, it uses explorer.exe to launch that, that file. So we know that explorer.exe, all those legitimate Windows file, to call it a legitimate uh, binary, it must reside in the legitimate directory, such as, uh, like again, the Windows system 32.exe. So if you have seen a legitimate looking name binary, but the path is not right, it needs a deep investigation. So based on our finding here, finds here, we can see that the iExplorer.exe was used, uh, was executed in the users, IE users downloads folder which is really, really, really a red flag for uh, an analyst because I explored that access should be in the Windows directory, specifically in uh, a search system 32 directory. I think this is enough as a red flag for us to identify. I think we got our answer. The, what's the PID and location of the main malware which initiated this action? So we have the Explorer T900 and then the full path is the users or let's say C users uh, IE user downloads I explore that exit so thank you everyone I hope you learned something new today especially with a uh, awesome or really amazing tool called Procdot. it gets the job done it gets it it lets you visualize what really happened without checking the csv file and the pickup file so yeah i think uh, that's a wrap and i hope you learned something today and we'll see you next time bye bye